So um, let's just uh, run a few more um, metrics on that be because there's, there's some really, really interesting uh, things that we can extract. So the first one, extract. The first one we've already uh, got is the uh, sharp ratio. And I wanna um, do just, just some simple things. So another one that's also often uh, being looked at uh, by traders is something called the drawdown. And the drawdown is effectively how much, um, what, what is the maximum uh, that we can lose um, at, you know, in, 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 in a strategy, because let's just say for exam, uh, for, for, for a moment, put yourself in the shoes of a big funds manager. And when you're a fund manager and, you know, you, you're here and then you, your clients lose 30%, they will all run away. They will basically just go, oh, this, this is horrible. Like, I don't want to be with this guy anymore. And basically, you're losing your business. Um, so, and you can tell your your clients, oh, but 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 the sharp ratio is just as good as the other guy who lost only a few percent, but no one cares. People say, have you ever watched um, uh, that movie? Uh, the uh, Big Short? The Big Short, yeah. That's what happens, you know? And you remember the guy when he sat on the phone and you were like taking phone calls and people were like, Rrr. no matter what, like if, if you're here, right? It's going to be really tough. And even yeah. if you just, if it's just your own money, it's going to be really scary. Um, so so drawdown is, is a really important um, metric. Um, and drawdown is a bit more tricky uh, to calculate. So let's... Um, Let's just uh, calculate um, the drawdown first, perhaps for um, the, the SPY, because because it's actually a Panda starter frame, and Panda starter frames are really helpful or useful for this. So what we do is we do spy dot close, and then what we want to do is if we want to calculate the drawdown, um, the drawdown is basically you, you know as as we go up, yeah. We always reach higher highs. We always reach another maximum. Yeah? And the drawdown is basically uh, the value that is the drop from the highest point that we have achieved so far. Yeah. So what we can do is we can do, do something called an expanding window. Yeah. And an expanding window is not like a moving window as we had with a moving average. Well, it basically starts at zero and it goes higher and higher and higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if we do an expanding window and then we take the maximum of that and let's just plot it, um, what happens is we're basically seeing, oh, we always get the maximum. And when we reach a new high, we get the expanding window going up like that. Yeah. So that's what you call... Um, that, that that's basically what you call uh, how you use expanding windows uh, for. Now, what we now want to know is how much um, how much did we uh, did we lose or what what what's our drawdown at any given point? And what we can do is we can just go spy dot close minus yeah. And so what we can what we do now is we're basically looking at the high point, and then and then we're we we we're we're, we're, uh, we're subtracting. I think I, it's the right way to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you go. You, here you can actually see um, how much we have uh, we have lost uh, at any given time, right? So um, you can see here. Uh, this, this is actually dollar values in this case. Okay, so we've basically lost 120 uh, points or 120 dollars uh, at the maximum. Now, that's obviously a little bit uh, tricky to do. So, so one thing we can also do is uh, instead of that, we can actually uh, do this, and then uh, minus one. So, so that hopefully will give us 
uh, the percentage. So this actually gives us the percentage returns, right? So do you remember when we calculated percentages and we could do one divided by the other minus one? Yeah. So that's basically now giving us the percentage losses of our, uh, and, and you can see here, the maximum loss that we've had was uh, 35%. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty big loss. <laughs> and uh, we could also, uh, instead of plot, we could just go max. And so this gives us our, uh, sorry, min, <laughs> not max, uh, min. And this gives us our, uh, basically 34.1%. That's, that's our highest, our, our deepest drawdown that we've had, yeah? So you can see it's actually pretty easy uh, to calculate. Now, unfortunately with our, um, uh, with, with our other uh, series, we don't have a Panda starter frame. What are we gonna do? We just create one, okay? So I just call it DF here. Yeah? What we can do is we can do PD dot data frame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we just uh, put in our unrealized returns. And then we say index equals unrealized DT here. Mm -hmm. yeah? And one thing we also need to do, we need to transpose it. Um, if we don't do this, Okay, let's just do this, TF. Oh, we haven't imported pandas yet. Oh, <laughs> okay, let's do this. Import pandas as PD. Well, so, quick question, what, what is pandas or? So pandas, so pandas, uh, I talked briefly about this before. Pandas is actually an incredibly useful package for financial um, time series analysis. It was actually built by guys from finance. So so it's a really, really good um, package. And it is actually phenomenally useful when you do uh, quantitative financial analysis. So generally when I do financial analysis, I use Pandas a lot. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a few downsides to Pandas, uh, but right now we will forget about that and we will just think about uh, the good things. Mm -hmm. So let's just run this again and you'll see in a moment why it's so useful. So you see here, you've got basically your time series here and then you've got all the dates in this. So what you could do for example now is you do cumulative sum dot plot, yeah, and then um, you can quite easily plot our mm -hmm. strategy performance and, and stuff like that. And of course, um, what we can also do is we just copy this and then let me, um, oh, let me put this in the next box. So you remember our, our data frame was just called DF. Mm -hmm. And so we just go DF divided by the F dot expanding. Oh, and and the minimum. Okay, so um that's not that's not going to work. Now the thing is though you remember that in our data frame we actually have percentage changes. So before when we used SPY we actually used um, um dollars. So we had to turn this into percentage changes. Now, in this case, we don't need to do this, right? We All we need to do is we just subtract them because we already got the percentage changes, right? So mm -hmm. um, there is something uh, not quite right. No, we probably Tricky, right? hardly come some. The That's the right, time. the cumulative yeah. sum. All right, yeah. So let's just... Um, Let's just for convenience add this in here, right? So mm -hmm. we just put the cumulative sum in and then we do, because in this case, we don't use the returns. We're actually using the, um... so there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is interesting. 
look, we still, you know, before we had a drawdown of um, 35, mm -hmm. we still got one of about 20% or even slightly more. Um, so it's still significant, but, you know, there's it a big difference. I mean, uh, this drawdown is only, only very short, uh, whereas before, you know, 35% really went down. So in terms of risk or in terms of drawdown, it's definitely a bit less. That's that's an advantage, right? So you can already see that this 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 is how we this is how we look at um how we look at uh you know analyzing uh, time series and trades. Uh, we want to understand okay um how uh, how do they uh, you know is it worth even trading this strategy? How does it perform? So if, you know, if drawdown risk is one of your concerns, um, you know, our strategy definitely has a lot less drawdown risk uh, than the, uh, than the SPY. So, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Even though the risk adjusted return is, is almost exactly the same, but our drawdown will be a lot less. And, you know, that's, that's, that's quite useful.